Hey guys. Well, I'm here at Malibu Beach once again. I'm about to have uh, lunch with my dear friend Kaim. We try to meet about every four or five months or so, and um, it's about that time. So we're just going to be hanging out today and just talking and just having some lunch. All right. God bless. The restaurant you see behind me, Real Inn, is the best seafood restaurant in the entire country. This is where we usually go to eat when we meet up. so blessed I get a chance to eat good once a month at least. <laughs> well, what'd you get? What'd you get? gets into town. <laughs> Orange roughy and uh, lots of potatoes. And of course, the thing that's going to sustain me is this wonderful fellowship that God has blessed us to have person to person from time to time. And that makes me feel real good. Amen, brother. Amen. I get a chance to, to hug and to love my brother eyeball to eyeball amen and to amen. encourage him and to try to understand him and what God is doing through him we've known each other now for over three years the interesting thing is the Lord brought us onto YouTube almost exactly at the same date in April 2007 and from that time to this day we've always encouraged one another and send blessings to one another and practice the Holy Spirit power Amen. Amen, brother. Same thing. Hey, I got the same thing you did. Yes, I got an orange roughy. I got a French fries. And I think I got some homestyle uh, potatoes under here. So uh, I'm going to have to eat this thing right now because I'm starving. Go now. ahead. <laughs> yeah, start it. Start it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so Kaim, I know we're just talking right now about um, the Lord disciplining those uh, who are his children. Well, what do you think about that? I thank God He loves us enough to take time to deal with us and to try to uh, prune us. And I've certainly been pruned pretty good and I know that you too have had your prunings, Mark. Oh, years ago, I was in sin and I knew it, but I couldn't change it. For some reason, I, I remained in a situation that I shouldn't have been in. And the Lord saw fit to take me to the woodshed. And he allowed a cancer to develop in my body, which almost killed me. But the Lord was gracious to me. He stopped it at a certain point. And I, uh, I never had a, a negative feeling towards God. I knew that God was disciplining me, that he was teaching me. He means what he says in his word. That if we don't discipline ourselves and stop our sin, we know our sin because the Holy Spirit makes it known to us. God will have to do it, and God prefers not to do it. And we certainly should do it ourselves and not have God discipline us. In fact, I've known situations where God has actually removed people not only from their ministry, but from life itself. Mm. And there's a good example in the Bible with Ananias and his wife, who in the original church lied to Peter about selling their property and the amount of money they received. And the disp disposition of the money for the church originally was to be put into a pot, so to speak, and people take what they need. They lied. And because it was such a, a formidable sin at that particular time, the birth of the church, God removed them, but they were saved. And we should understand that. I never lost mine, and they never lost theirs. Yeah. The Lord will discipline those who belong to Him. Who He loves. That's right. He so will chasten. He chastens us. 
Amen, brother. Amen. I want to add something to what we were talking about before, Mark, and it's important for the brethren. Listen, God knows us, and He knows that we love Him. And those are, who are His will be His. And I want to talk about David. David sinned with Bathsheba. And what happened to David? He lost his child, his first child with Bathsheba. The boy was, was taken up. And uh, David suffered grievously. But that boy was with God. And what did David say? He said, He can't come to me. One day I will go to him. Which certainly tells us something about our eternal life. And David also was known to say and in, the, in the 23rd Psalm, Truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we have eternal life that's guaranteed by Jesus. And Moses, Moses hit the rock in anger. He lost his temper. And what happened to Moses? He couldn't step into the promised land. He led the people right to the border, and then God took him. But Moses was saved. Yeah, you know, Mark, I, I'm so troubled by things that are going on in this world of ours. And I know so many people, so many of the younger brethren are, are, are very troubled by events, but my advice to the younger generation who love Jesus is to be totally confident that no matter what happens, the Lord is going to get us through it. And He's promised that to us. Nothing is going to take us down. Right. But we have Israel, and Israel is of course dear to me because I'm a Jew by birth. And we see that, that Israel is looking for security from Gentile nations. Not from God, and certainly not from Jesus. And they think that by getting planes, and tanks, and by developing nuclear weapons, which we believe they have, that this is going to ensure them their security. But we know the Bible tells us differently. The Bible says that not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I wish I could go and speak with Mr. Netanyahu. <laughs> I know he's a smart guy, but stop shoe shining the President of the United States. He's not going to bring him anything. And neither is anybody else that's in their flesh. Well, Obama hates Israel anyway. And our poor president, he's been so uh, uh, ill-advised and his learnings have been so jaded. Perhaps he, he could be a strong Christian if he got some good counsel. Well, he's not a Christian, period. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you have to worry about that as well. He, he doesn't accept the Bible as the Word of God. He has his critiques of the Bible. Mm. And uh, he also most dramatically and most uh, heretically believes that Jesus is not the only way to get into the presence of God the Father. Oh yeah, he thinks Islam is just as good as uh, Christianity. So I have to I have to say pray for the president that he would be converted and that he would come to a full belief and perhaps then he could direct our nation properly. Amen. So Kaim, as we uh, end this day what word of encouragement uh, do you have for our brothers and sisters here on YouTube? Mark, you see the ocean behind us, the Pacific? Well, God's love is greater than all the oceans of the world, for all of us. And no matter what circumstances each of us is in, according to His perfect will for us, He's going to give us the greatest blessing that we've ever had in our lifetime in these difficult times that we face. Because this is the time for us in this world and God is going to make the most of it through us let us pray every day for filling and anointing of the Holy Spirit just like Paul taught and then step out and preach the gospel as you have said and as we all know we should do and whoever is coming will come and whoever isn't won't and those who come are predestined and those who don't are not elect that's it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you too, man. Okay. God bless you, huh? God bless you. By the way, the food was great, wasn't it? It was wonderful as usual. <laughs> I love it. Especially since it cost me nothing. <laughs> Take care, man. Okay. All right, brother. Okay. Nice to see you.